So what are three procedures that you do every day in your practice that 3D printing will change forever? Hey, I'm Dr. Chris Griffin, founder of the 3D Printing Association for Dentists, and this is the video series that helps dentists like you and me put, it, put 3D printing in their practice to help them every single day. What are three procedures that you do every day in your practice that 3D printing is gonna change forever? So before we get started real quick, um, let me make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. So that's the way that, that's the way that you can easily find this again and other dentists can find it too. So take a minute and you know, subscribe to the channel and hey, give us a thumbs up uh, for, for all the hard work we're doing. It just makes it easier for us to be found on YouTube, okay? Thanks a bunch. Um, so getting back to the topic, okay? There are three procedures that we do every single day that are gonna be completely impacted by 3D printing. In fact, I believe that there's a good chance that hardly any dentist in America is gonna be doing any of these three procedures the same way in five years, as soon as five years. I know we're slow about changing, but what are they? So let's dive into them, okay? The first one, um, models. I mean, you probably already knew this. Um, and hey, 3D printing can do lots of cool stuff, but these three things, are, they're just gonna be completely displaced because the power of the models is you no longer have to take impressions, which patients, you know, let's face it, most patients hate impressions. Um, and it just, you don't have to, you know, once you switch to 3D printed models, you don't have to have stone, you don't have to have plaster, you don't have to have alginate, no polyvinyl siloxane. Uh, so it's just a lot less stuff that you have to keep up with. The footprint of a 3D printer is very small. I and mean, you can look behind me and see, these, this is a pretty big printer right here. Uh, this is a pretty small printer. Um, it's just, it's pretty small and that's all you have to have. I mean, once you get rid of your stone grinder, which you absolutely can do, I haven't had a stone grinder in my dental office for, for over two years now. So once you get rid of that, you can pretty much fit the printer in that footprint. And then there's just a few accessories that go around it. So I hear a bunch, you know, I hear a lot of times that when dentists say, hi, I just don't have space for my 3D printer. That's why I haven't bought one yet. I'm telling you, you just don't understand how small these things are and then how much output they can produce. So you're probably not gonna be doing models if you're not already doing them 3D printed. You're not gonna be doing them the same way in five years. I, I believe probably the materials that we use to do models the way we've always done it for the past 50, 60, 100 years, uh, they'll be harder to get, they'll be more expensive because uh, things are just headed towards the direction of more 3D printing, okay? So that's number one. That's a big one, but maybe it's not that exciting, okay? Let me throw something at you that's a little bit more exciting. So how do you feel about temporary crowns, okay? Now I know same day crowns are great, and I love same day crowns, but sometimes you just need a temporary, right? And, and so the way a lot of practices do temporaries right now is uh, they'll get the patient in the day of the procedure. Maybe they'll take a PVS impression of the tooth that they're gonna be working on. You go ahead, you numb them up, prep it. Uh, then, then the doctor many times can leave the room and let the assistant take over and make the temporary, which is great. It's way better than the dentist having to sit there and do it, okay? Um, but that's valuable time. And a lot of times the, uh, you know, your assistant will, they'll take the, the PVS impression and they'll fill it with some sort of bisacryl temporary material and they'll put it back on the tooth, let it harden up, take it off, you know, smooth it up, pop it back in, check the occlusion, blah, blah, blah. It takes a while, right? Now some assistants are superstars and, and of course you as a dentist could probably do this faster, but let's think about it. Would you rather be paying that superstar employee who's really great at making temporaries during a busy work day when they have also got superstar qualities they could be using to work on other patients and other procedures, do you really want them sitting chair side, polishing a temporary and taking a long time uh, when you could have your 3D printer employee working overnight the night before and printing up these temporaries before you, before you even prep the tooth? Because that's absolutely possible now. The, we've talked before in another video about some of the free softwares in dentistry one of the free softwares that's really cool is by the Medit, uh, the Medit software we talked about. 
they have a temporary module where they will actually make a shell temporary. They'll de design a temporary that's going to have good occlusion to start with and it will design it and they'll make it very thin where it's sort of a shell but when you prep the tooth you more than likely will have prepped plenty way more than you even had to uh, more than the computer mo uh, software suggested so once you're through prepping the tooth you can literally scan your tooth for your impression pick up the shell temporary fill it with cement uh, more than likely, you know, because it's not perfect, perfect, the integralio surface not perfect, like as if you made a chair side, you know, it's a little bit of discrepancy. You might probably want to use some sort of a, some sort of a composite based resin uh, cement, fill it with that, squish it on, and it hardens up, and it's just as good as the temporary you would have slaved over or your staff person would have slaved over for 20, 30 minutes. And so that's just a way better use of time. So I believe the way we make temporary crowns, that's going out the window too, right? Because not only do you save the time during the work day, but you also save the materials. You're not wasting the PVS. Because the three, right now, at least, the 3D printed resins are way cheaper than the PVS. I mean, the amount of resin it takes to make a temporary crown, you know, we're talking a dollar, something like that, right? And so between the PVS and the bisacryl you were using already, you're already way past that. So that's the second one. That's, that's the second one. Now the third one is going to be a, the biggest one and it's going to be a little bit controversial. So I've got proof here in my hands, right? So um, I didn't want you guys to, to uh, get too excited. But, uh, you know, before we, before we get to the third one, the big one, real quick, let me, let me ask you guys to take a minute. Um, if you like 3D printing, here in the you know here at the 3DPA we've got some free resources we'd like to share with you. One of the free resources we have is we have checklists um, where you can just go down and make sure you have everything you need and make sure you're doing everything correctly for three of the biggest most uh, impactful procedures uh, that 3D printing impacts in dentistry. Um, so that we've got that here. You just click click the spot where it says grab your free checklist. And it'll take you to the page and you can you can get those because uh, we want you guys to have all the tools you need as you're getting into this okay so uh, go grab your checklist and uh, now we'll talk about the third one so the third one i believe and you may not believe me when i say this because some people out there are still doing uh, you know gold crowns and pfms but permanent crowns are going to be completely overturned the way that we've always done them um, it's just in the last few months that it's even really feasible to do a permanent crown on a person 3D printing. Currently, there's only a couple of FDA-approved resins out there for permanent crowns. But all that's about to change. And let me tell you why. Because here you go. Um, in June, I'm sorry, July 2022, Inside Dentistry Magazine reported that the ADA porcelain ceramic materials definition is being revised by the ADA Council on Dental Benefit Programs and will be included in the current CDT 2023 manual. Now that starts January 1st, okay? Now what they've done is previously the code, uh, and this affects all porcelain crowns, the code read um, materials used to create prostheses via uh, well, they changed it to include 3D printing. It previously said porcelain ceramic was defined as pressed, fired, polished, or milled materials containing predominantly inorganic refractory compounds, including porcelains, glasses, ceramics, and glass ceramics. Okay, what they did to allow for 3D printed crowns to be included was they updated this to remove the specified fabrication methods and simply the definition now states materials containing predominantly inorganic refractory compounds including porcelains, glasses, ceramics, and glass ceramics. They removed um, the press, fired, polished, or milled materials part of the definition. Now that's a lot of words. That's why I wanted to get it right. That's why I printed it off. Um, but basically, previously to file, I assume to file an insurance claim because they're including it in their current dental terminology, 2023, you know, you had to meet that standard which is either all porcelain the way it's always been, uh, some sort of pressed ceramic, some sort of zirconia, milled, uh, Emacs, something like that. 
Well, now, as long as, according to this definition, as long as whatever you're giving a person has greater than 50% of the uh, porcelains, glasses, ceramics, and glass ceramics, which now includes some 3D printable resins, which have greater than 50% ceramic in them as a filler, uh, now you can build that out as an all porcelain crown. Hey, I'm not a lawyer, so don't you know, speak to somebody else before you actually file an insurance claim, but that's what, it, the way I read the report, that's what I believe is getting ready to happen starting January next year, is that as long as, you're, as, long as your material has greater than 50% ceramic, you'll be able to build that out as uh, all porcelain, right? So uh, that's a big deal because now, well, first off, of course, you're going to have, there's a little learning curve because right now, you know, we're used to these really pretty all porcelain zirconia or Emax crowns or whatever. Uh, and there's going to be a learning curve for you to learn how to make these 3D printed resin crowns, right, that have 50% ceramic in them or greater. Um, so it's going to take a little time, but when you find out that, hey, I'm paying 100 bucks or 200 bucks or 150 bucks for a zirconia right now, and I can get a crown that, for all intents and purposes, is just as good for the patient, and it's now costing me five bucks? I mean, maybe that? Because these crowns are very small. Um, that's a big deal in savings. And you can pass that savings on to your patients. You can help people. You can make crowns for people that couldn't afford it otherwise, you know. Um, or some cases, some dentists are going to make a lot more profit. And that's just the way, at least on the front end, that's what's going to happen until the market kind of stabilizes and learns what's going on. So um, I think permanent crowns are going to be in a state of complete craziness in 2023 as people try to figure out what this means and how to change and how to maneuver their practice to help more people with this information. So there you go. So the three things that are going to change in dentistry, they're change what you do right now. Models are going to completely change the way you do them. Temporary crowns are going to completely change. And if you're doing especially same day crowns, permanent crowns, is, this, is going to, this is basically where Cyric was 30 years ago. So th think Cyric 30 years ago, 3D printed chair side crowns are coming. They're coming fast. I've been told every single major 3D printer manufacturer has one of these resins that qualifies under this code in the works for 2023. Um, and I've also been told that a major company, like the company we would all know, I just hate to report it, um, that's famous for milled crowns, has shifted all of their R&D research budget over from milling to 3D printing. So what's that tell you guys? It's coming. So hey, I say let's get on. Let's get in front of this. Let's be on the front end of technology. Uh, the 3D PA. We're gonna we're gonna try to stay on top of everything. So just keep coming back to these videos and our homepage, and uh, we're gonna try to keep everybody abreast of the changes and keep you on top of stuff so you can take advantage of this miraculous new technology. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for the thanks for watching and uh, grab those checklists, and we'll see you next time.